Everyone has some sort of idea what atoms are. It's the smallest, um, well that's not the smallest, it's... it's... <laughs> Adam is, um... No, I can't. It's not quite the smallest piece of all matter, but it's getting there. Basic component of an element? I have no idea. It's something very small. But how do we know they exist? Where's the evidence? Well, it's buried in over 2,000 years of thinking, experimenting and discovering. And in that time, there have been a few major revelations that have shaped the way we think about the world and sculpted the way we think about atoms today. The whole idea of atoms started with Democritus, and this is Democritus. He was born in the 4th century BC in ancient Greece, and along with his teacher, Leucippus, he developed the first concepts of what we today call atoms. So the way the Greek philosophers thought about science is very different to the way we think about it today. They didn't have any concept of laboratories or experiments or mad scientists. They didn't know about gravity. Or electricity. Or the Higgs boson. They didn't even have a concept of the mind existing inside the brain, or, or even that the brain controls the body. They thought things like flavour and colour were intrinsic properties of objects, and not the sensations we think of them as today. Thinking like the ancient Greeks, how is the universe made up? Well, it's full of stuff, but not totally full. If the universe was completely full and all packed in, it would be fixed and unchanging. But we see change all the time. Things move and grow. So there must be a void, a, a nothingness in between the atoms so that they can move around. Another argument for this is if I try and cut something, like a piece of cheese, the knife has to pass into the void between the atoms. Because if it didn't, it would just hit a hard impenetrable atom and my knife would be useless. Still good. Democritus argued that different atoms were different shapes and the atoms that made up air or water must be round because they slide past each other like peppercorn. But he also argued that the atoms that made up a lemon were sharp. And they were sharp because they tasted sour. Where's my damn tequila? It's an attractive theory, and one that justifies the existence of atoms as a pure argument but it was tossed aside in favour of the Aristotelian elements of air, water, fire and earth. And it wasn't reconsidered until hundreds of years later. It wasn't until into the 16th century that people started to look at the dormant ideas of Democritus and test them. And it wasn't really accepted until well into the 19th century. This guy, Democritus, was well ahead of his time.